Coin traders and Algo fam, how we doing? Looking at Algorand today, A L G O on that ticker. Got a lot to talk about with this price because we've just had a constant upside move, which is great, obviously, for great price action considering such a huge pullback for so long. So we got a lot to talk about today. So if you do like the content and want more like this, you know what to do. Hit the thumbs up, like, and subscribe button if you haven't done so just yet. And so right now, looking at Algorand at 23.12. So if we zoom in right now on the current daily structure, you can see that we're actually forming inside bars right now on the current day. So unfortunately, just barely broke outside of the price range of the previous bullish day. So we're not having a third inside bar just yet. But what is significant is that we don't have that much of a body for this bearish candle as the size of the body that we had for the nice bullish candle. And as you can see, almost basically no wick on the top of this bullish candle. So haven't really been able to find that selling pressure just yet. But so yesterday did mark the first bearish candle that had closed. And let's go ahead and count it out 10 bars. So we had 10 consecutive upside daily candles combined with the six that we had prior when we did have our initial bull move on the 30th of December. So price gain wise, we've seen a total upside of over 50%. And so with the exception of one notable pullback to set a higher low, we've pretty much been just in a constant linear uptrend. And one of the notable things too is that the candle that just closed was actually one of the biggest that we've seen. So almost 5%. Everything else on this move wasn't nearly that strong at all, about 3%. We've got even the next biggest one was about 3% as well. So the fact that we've seen our biggest bars in terms of the body on these candles up basically right at the end. And this also comes after we blew past this 50 period exponential moving average where these candles were actually defending support on top of it. So we're definitely going to be due for a period of at least consolidation and allowing these exponential moving averages to roll over since now we're actually getting almost a complete bullish flip since we have had the 12 intersect and cross over the 50 period EMA. Now, if we go ahead and turn on some indicators, so let's look at the RSI first. So we have topped out at 76.68. And so now on the current daily, we are at 67.69. So basically barely low on the current daily, barely low enough to get with inside the normal trading ranges down below that 70 line. So one of the things that we actually want to look out for on this EMA too, and let's go ahead and enlarge it a little bit, is that this yellow line is actually the moving average for the RSI. And typically what we've seen is that when we get a bearish cross on the RSI and the EMA, that typically signals a pretty substantial price correction. So for example, if we actually zoom out the last time we did have that bearish cross, and I'm talking about significant and substantial bearish crosses too, by the way, not necessarily something insignificant like this where we barely get above the EMA. So especially once we have an overbought indicator above the 70 line, once we have a bearish cross in that instance where we do have the RSI dip below the moving average for this RSI line, that pretty much ends up being one of the big indicators right before we do see a pretty substantial pullback. So for example, even the previous time before that back in September, when we topped out right about the 40 level, we barely broke into the overbought. And yet same thing, we had a bearish cross. RSI line did actually drop below this moving average line. And then you can see if even from just that point, we still pulled back about 17%. So let's actually go back to the peak of the bull market right now back in September of 21. So we had a pretty substantial overbought. And then once we actually crossed below the moving average, that is when we had our significant retracement. And so even from the point of that cross in that intersection, we were still looking in that instance of a pullback of about 28%. So even leading up to that, you can see was this little mini move and we barely got into the overbought level, but same sort of thing. Once we even pulled back and had a retracement after that, the retracement to the bottom of that move was still about 7%. So zooming out, we can see that let's go ahead and draw a line as well where this rsi actually is because every single time we have seen oversold levels or overbought excuse me get to that point we've had that significant retracement and especially every time we do see that bearish cross below the moving average for this rsi we do get that significant retracement as well so even in this instance quick rally and then an immediate pullback breaking below that with almost a 30 percent retracement back in february of 21 where we got our highest daily rsi same sort of thing 
And so what's also significant about this chart as well when we talk about the RSI is that let's go ahead and zoom in on the current daily pattern for a little bit because the thing that we haven't had before is going from an immediate oversold level to then an immediate linear uptrend into an overbought level. So as you can see, zooming out every single time we were even oversold, we did end up even so, for example, coming back in March of 2020 after the COVID flush, still found a little bit of sideways trading before ultimately getting to that overbought level. So just the timing that it has taken to get this euphoric in this short of a time. And as you can see, again, this is pretty much just a straight line, especially since that's kind of what the price has been doing. So personally, I don't think we will maybe necessarily see that big of a retracement like we have seen before, but we do know that after getting overbought, it is inevitable that we will see a pullback in the RSI that will drop below this moving average. And typically when we do see that, we do end up getting even at a minimum, like we saw about a 7% once that cross happens. So for example, even looking at a 10 to 15% retracement right now, would still be pulling back in between the 20 cent and the 19 cent levels, which if we actually look at a Fibonacci retracement from this low where we did set back in December, then as you can see, that would pretty much have prices sitting in between the 61.8 and the 50% retracement, which is typically a normal level for cryptos to retrace to especially after going just so euphoric in such a short period of time. So I do think these are going to be our semi short term targets. But we also know that typically targets do take about two weeks to ultimately retrace and get down to. So I do think that we could be looking at prices being a little bit more bearish over the coming week. Now, one of the bullish things for algo right now, and I have flipped over into the log scale chart for this one day candles. And so if we actually look at this downtrend line that we've been talking about before, then you can see that we don't really have a lot of room left. But when we do talk about upside targets, we could actually look at the big resistance line overhead about 28 cents and allow that to be a very nice target. So for example, if we do end up retracing and consolidating for a little bit of a time period, that would actually allow the time frame to sit pretty nice to allow this target to ultimately end up hitting because at some point the prices will ultimately end up intersecting with this downtrend line. And if we talk about a time frame for that target, that would be about the first week of February. And personally, I think that that's a little bit more realistic than just seeing continuation and a constant uptrend. Obviously, nothing is impossible. But if we actually look at the volume here on this chart, then what we're seeing is just a complete euphoric spike in this bullish volume, which actually wasn't even the biggest daily candle bar in terms of the body that we saw. So what this chart has told us previously is that when we get big spikes for volume on the way up, then that pretty much is a top indicator. So for example, when we got these two big bars, that was our big top indicator for this move before retracing. Same sort of thing prior to the FTX flush. This was our biggest point of bull volume that we had seen and established. And so even now, we've actually only gotten that much volume for just one single candle. And so that's kind of why I'm being a little bit more pessimistic about the chart too, because based on what the volume has told us before, along with some of the other technical indicators and how far overextended things are, having all of this bullish volume come in, especially with a bullish volume peak, shows that exhaustion is occurring. And so I think really the best case for the bulls right now is a little bit of consolidation, even potentially a bull flag, which could retrace to test these exponential moving averages. Because right now, there just doesn't seem like there's enough gas in the tank for the bulls. And quite frankly, especially after just such continuous upside moves for over two weeks now, it's actually a little shocking to think that we haven't had anything prior coming in because it is necessary and needed in order to continuously grow and show a strong upside move. Because otherwise, what happens is we actually get exhausted too fast without taking the time to establish supports and resistances on the way up of this move, which just completely weakens the ability of the bulls to be able to hold up in the face of downside pressure. Now, I do think that FUD and euphoria has been pretty extreme lately. So I do think that it would take a big, completely new a black swan catalyst in order to create another FTX type flush. But also that's not to say that it's impossible just based on the lack of support that we have seen based on no real resistance points on the way up. So even if we look at the two day chart and we've talked about this before that we've seen now and let's go ahead and count because we're actually just experiencing 
So we've seen 10 total bars on this upside move, just continuous and consecutive, which has actually never happened for Algorand before. So on this two-day chart too, we're actually approaching a very big resistance level and in fact a resistance zone. But specifically, we're looking at 23.49 because if we look back at the closing support, this was a big point of closing support prior to breaking down to our lows. So naturally, this is like what we talk about when we do talk about resistance points on the way up being previous supports on the way down. So since this was such a big and established level on this 20 on this two day chart, this is one of the perfect points to actually establish a high for resistance and allow the bulls to take a break and allow the bears to take over before we do confirm a higher low. So another thing I want to point out on this two day chart is that if we actually zoom in on these candles a little bit, you can see that every candle had a higher low compared to the candle that was before it, with the exception of just barely breaking a new lower low on these two candles. But other than that, and that was pretty much just a formality in my opinion, because we're talking about two one hundredths of a cent. But so otherwise, even including the current two day candle, we're still seeing higher lows on this overall uptrend. So we are definitely going to be due for a pretty substantial retracement which I see is either bottoming out around this 21 cent level, or otherwise then we will be looking down to about the 19 cent level, which if we go ahead and draw a price line right here, you can see looking left, big point of resistance, and then also big point of resistance. So hopefully confirming two points of resistance before breaking it bullish would actually confirm to be a very nice support to the downside. And then pulling up the Fibonacci again, just as a reminder, that would end up being right around the 61.8% retracement, which is a perfect level to retrace to. So next thing that I want to dive into and talk about on this chart as well is the Bollinger Band. So essentially, this is a standard deviation on top and below of a moving average. So the orange line right now is that moving average. And then we have the same percentage growth to the upside as we do have to the downside. And that's how the Bollinger Bands form. And typically, this is an indication of being overbought and oversold. So on this two-day chart, for example, you can see that when we do approach the bottom line, this does act like a pretty nice support. And then also when we do get to or around the upper Bollinger Band on this two-day chart, that does act as a little bit of that overbought indicator. And typically we do see a price retracement to at least down to or below this moving average line. So again, even looking, we saw very big resistance rejected from it dropping below, finding support on the bottom Bollinger Band until we actually broke bullish. Overbought indicator, retrace below. Once again, overbought, retrace below, and then rode this bottom Bollinger Band all the way down for support. And then we finally are now breaking above it, confirming resistance on this top Bollinger Band. So the price line for this moving average for the Bollinger Band right now is coming in at 19.39. So if we do end up getting a retracement down to that level from current prices, that's about a 15% retracement. Personally, I feel like we're setting up a little bit more like this formation just because the last times that we've broken the bullish on top of this Bollinger Band on the two day, it was actually a pretty significant and sizable candle for this one two day. So it's obviously not to say that we couldn't see a huge explosive move breaking out of it, but personally, I don't really see it, especially after already having our big volume peak come in, as well as our other overbought indicators being found. So flipping into the one hour really quick before we go ahead and wrap up this analysis for Algorand, I wanted to just point out how on this short term chart, we actually were looking at exponential moving average support, especially along this 50 for the one hour trend on Algo. So now if we look at the top, you can see that after losing all this support, it has been apparent that we are establishing the EMAs as resistance once again. And that's why we are starting to get a little bit of resistance up overhead at about 23.2. So when we talk about consolidation patterns, kind of like what we're seeing right now, typically with consolidation patterns and continuation patterns, they do end up breaking out into the direction that they were traveling before the consolidation happened. However, that does start to get a lot more decreased with the overextension of the longer term charts. So that does start to favor more and more bearish breakouts from happening. So right now on this chart, we're looking at a little bit of closing support pretty much just below the 23 cent line. So if the bulls can actually find enough strength to break above these EMAs in about the 23.2 cent resistance line, then we would need to see a break and a top on top of 23.64 in order to change the shorter term trend on this one hour chart, especially after setting this higher low. 
But so we're actually looking at a lot of strength exhaustion right now, especially, and I did switch over into the six hour chart, by the way, because let's go ahead and talk about the volume that came in on this current candle. Wasn't even the trend high of the move. So typically when we do see a rising channel such as this with a higher high, but yet lower high in volume peaks, that does start to signal a lot of exhaustion and that the top is going to be coming in. And so that's why when we do start to change the trend on the shorter term charts, we can be a little bit more certain that this trend high is going to be in for the time being. Now, something significant about this six hour chart too is just the body of these candles, this bullish candles that ended up closing since they were so small and insignificant compared to the one big six hour candle that, that dropped bearish to ultimately retest and trace this 12 period EMA. Now I want to go ahead and turn off the volume as well as the 12 and 50 period EMA because this 26 period EMA has basically been a good guide for where we can end up. So ever since breaking bullish on top of it back in December when we found our low, we have had a complete air gap most of the time pulling back to actually retrace this on this six hour. So even this most recent frequency still haven't had a complete retracement and touch, but more or less, it still was a pretty good guide. So if we do end up seeing prices retrace to the same time, just like what we saw back at the start of the month, when prices retrace to about 18, if we do end up getting something similar, then we could be looking potentially even to see prices retracing and testing about the 22.5 level. So even from there, the potential downside would only be about two and a half percent. So looking at upside targets now in the event of that bull break and formation, we're pretty much only looking at about the 25 cent psychological, which was huge resistance prior to the flush that we saw. And so in that event, also, we also saw very nice closing support on this 23 cent line, which we are currently still defending. So if that line does end up breaking, that could be one of the confirmation signals to let us know that we are going to see prices dropping down and testing some of those lower lows for support. So I would definitely love to know everyone's thoughts and opinions down in the comment sections below. So drop me a note. Let me know your predictions, agreements, disagreements, all that stuff. Do love getting back to each and every one of you. That is going to wrap up the show for now, though. So if you did enjoy, please hit that thumbs up, like, and subscribe button if you haven't done so just yet. Do appreciate all the continued love and support. As always, it does mean so much. Stay safe, take care, and I'll catch you back in the next video.